Okay, let's talk about the Ukraine-Russian situation going on here. We're, you know, we got tensions going over there. We got killing happening over there. We got military hardware over there. We got all kinds of junk being piped out. But you got to understand um, the history <clears throat> between these two, which goes back many, 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 many centuries. Uh, so it's a historic thing. It's, it's just kind of like I've explained briefly, is touched upon. If you're in the United States, uh, pretend like Texas is its own separate little country, which used to be yours. Used to be a part of yours. You still consider it, uh, in many minds, part of yours, even though it is now separate. So maybe you're thinking somewhere along the line that you would like to get that back. So this little article here kind of briefly touches on uh, different things. You know, it's kind of a condensed version of it because there's quite extensive uh, reading to see throughout the centuries different things about the Ukraine. But you can kind of come down here until it's not too far away from our time. And You can see about 1920, like it's telling you, borders were finally settled and western parts of the Ukraine became part of the Polish Republic while the eastern remained in what would become the Soviet Union. They've had poles and pushes east and west. These things go back at least five centuries. And then it says, uh, you know, make a choice between Russia and, and Europe and stuff. So this is what we've been piped out to in the media, you know, about the bailout. Um, Ukraine's finances are not doing too well right now. The GDP's way down. Uh, you know, European Union, I believe, offered them a bundle of cash. Russia offered us some cash. They're piping it out that they were going to take the European cash and then they were going to take the Russian cash. Well, anyhow, the fallout is what it is. Russia's always wanted this back. Like I've said, it's, it's a key port. And then you're talking about uh, oil and gas. Russia does a lot of that, don't they? Make a lot of money off the oil and gas they got. Ukraine has resources too. Oh yeah. Maybe not on the scale that Russia does. But... And then you've heard the U.S. is on schedule to be the world's biggest uh, oil exporter by 2017. Replacing what? Saudi Arabia? So, there's a lot that goes into this mix. Uh, I don't believe for a minute uh, some people are saying this could be the beginning of World War Three or nuclear war or something. No, it's not going to be. Nobody's going to do anything. I mean, think about it. <clears throat> Everything Obama has said, with the exception of one thing, he did say when he campaigned 
He wanted to fundamentally change America, and he has. He has fundamentally flushed the values of Americans down the toilet. That's the one promise that I can, uh, maybe it wasn't an actual promise, but it was a statement. That's the one thing I can think of that he's actually uh, done, that he said he would do. Everything else, you know, he pretty well says he's going to do. It's been a lie. You know, he's telling you the poison is good when the poison is bad. So, he's not going to do anything here against Russia. England's not going to do anything. China's not going to do anything. Nobody's going to do anything. This whole thing is going to play out. And in the end, uh, Russia's, in my estimation, they're going to pretty well reabsorb the Ukraine. And you can see that they've had disputes about the gas. Are you so quick to forget? There was a crescendo reached in 2006 and Russia cut off all the gas supplies going through the Ukraine. And then they made a, an agreement and turned the spigot back on. Can you imagine that? What if the, what if that happened here? You think uh, you think people wouldn't be totally freaked out if if somebody just stopped the flow of the of the gas? And then in seven they had new disputes over the gas debts, reduction of supplies, tension. They couldn't agree on debts owed by Ukraine in two thousand and eight. And in nine, it resulted in disruptions of supply in many nations. See? Eighteen countries reporting drops in or complete cutoffs of their gas supplies transported through Ukraine from Russia. And Ukraine has signed some deals with uh, other companies for their resources. And you got a court of arbitration and they ruled that Naftahoff of Ukraine must return 12.1 cubic meters of gas to the space company which Gazprom controls a 50% stake. And the Ukrainian guys said it wouldn't be a quick return. So, you can continue to read, research and stuff. But in my opinion, this is about resources and reabsorption of a piece of land back into the motherland of the Soviet Union. And I believe when it's all shook out, that's basically what's going to, will have happened. But you're going to still have part of the Ukrainians that are totally against it. Now how will they respond? Well that'll be the $64 question because I don't believe that part of them will ever accept this. So, <clears throat> I got a feeling there's going to be some more bloodshed before the bloodshed is stopped. But I don't believe there's going to be any type of a meeting. Well, they may have a type of a meeting at the UN, you know, and they may do some condemnation and do some yapping and this, that, and the other. But there ain't nothing going to be you know, happening. They're not going to get a force of many to go out in there and, and do nothing. You're not going to see military action from no other countries to go in there and do nothing. I, I feel a hundred percent sure about that. Because if you did get something like that interfering in there, there would be some stuff falling out of that. But I don't see that. I don't see any sign of 
any other nations doing nothing. You know, Obama can shoot his mouth off about, you know, it's going to be cost if you if you go in there with the military. Yeah, right. Well, it's all part of uh, the end days. It's just the way it is. Wars, rumors of wars. You know, wars, we haven't really fought a war, war in a long time. There's no winners to these wars anymore. There's conflicts. But back when there was war, you know, a lot of these young ones nowadays don't understand. Back when there was war, you had a decisive victor. You had a winner. You had a loser. Now, you're just getting in these conflicts, many conflicts. You know, there's no decisive winner anymore. That way they can, once you have a decisive victor, things are done. You know, the war is finished. Well, nowadays, the way they do it, conflicts continue. You know, they're never really, really over, you know. You know, supposedly why we, we did our deal in Afghanistan, we did our deal in Iraq, we, you know, we did our deal in Libya, you know, on and on and on. And now everything's all better, which is BS. And we can just go home. Well, you see, the stuff's still going on. Still going on. We got suicide bombers still blowing stuff up. We got the so-called Taliban, Al-Qaeda, all that jazz. You know, we still got stuff going in Syria, and he's still there. Assad, I told you he wasn't going nowhere. I've said that a million times. And you still have warmonger McCain and other officials over here calling for, hey, we need to bomb. Hey, we need to go over there. Yeah, we got to do this, that, and the other. And you got Hillary Clinton, you know, putting her two cents in. Those people, like I said, the rebels are not the good guys. The rebels are just a mixture of people that want to make things better in Syria, and they are way outnumbered by the scumbags that are brought in from foreign country mercenaries. And, yes, you got Al-Qaeda in there. Yeah, yeah, McCain, yeah, Hillary Clinton, let's give some weapons to Al-Qaeda. Yeah, you see the game they play? And you want to know why the, you know, why have they never come clean about Benghazi? Hmm? Well, because Benghazi would spill the beans to you about how we were doing gun running to the rebels. Yeah, yeah. You wouldn't like to know all the gory, grisly details of, of how we got our little proxy war going and how we were pushing buttons to try and do an overthrow, would you? Yeah. That would be foreign involvement, wouldn't it, in the other countries' affairs, you know, trying to do overthrows, and we don't do that, do we? No, uh-uh. Nah. You see how corrupted the, the entire thing has become everywhere? Everywhere you got people like Soros, you know, that enjoy uh, festering regime change and turning things upside down and shaking everything out and then turning it back over and you got something new, which is what they want. They want order out of chaos. They create the chaos. Create the problem. Offer the solution. Yeah. What a grand bunch of plans they have, isn't it? So, don't expect a war out of this, other than not a world war. Uh, this will be a, a, a conflict. But Russia's going to end up winning this conflict. If you can call it winning. So, don't give up hope. In the end, there won't be any suffering. There won't be any evil. God will take care of all of it. Till then, we got to deal with it. We have to go through some suffering of our own. But, 
the war gets won by the good side in the end.